Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's, it's amazing. And I've just finished watching Million Dollar Listing Season 9. And I want you to know that all of us Aussies are usually way more fun to work with than the ones the, ah. the the thing that you had on the virtual reality episode. Yeah, but I loved I love that I actually got to show because we work with a lot of uh, Australians here in New York who buy for investment or to have a place in New York City, and it was fun. <laughs> well, I love the um, I love the innovation that you had of having two phones up to your head and like everyone was sort of talking like a, around your head. It was very cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're here today to talk mostly about your new branding course, but I've got to dive into the show a little bit because there are plenty of fans here of you and the show. Yeah. You started your own brand, Sirhant, this year in the middle of a global pandemic, but that doesn't really surprise me, I guess, because you started in real estate the day that the Lehman Brothers collapsed in 2008. I did. What was it like um, and how did you know it was the right time to leave the nest, literally, and build your own company? Well, it felt like it was the right time for me to build my own company, actually, a long time before. Um, but I just wanted to get, I wanted to feel really ready. Um, and by 2020, I felt really ready. It made a lot of sense. It was the start of a new decade. It was 2020 vision, all of that stuff. I did not anticipate a pandemic or the world falling apart, but you know, we started the business, uh, or you have, we started planning to start the business. COVID hit, New York City shut down, the United States shut down, the country shuts down, can't go anywhere. Everyone says I'm crazy, but I'm like, you know what? Everyone else is shutting down and stopping. This is probably the best time to go. Like, this is, this is the best time to launch a new company because no one else would do it. Everyone's stuck on their phone. This is gonna be like the best exposure I've ever had. You know, now people won't just be like, oh, Ryan Serhan starting a company. And I, if I started a company in 2019 or now, like, the expectations would be so high. I'd have to do like a parade down Fifth Avenue. I would have to go crazy. And everyone would say, oh, really? You're starting a company because the real estate market's so hot? Perfect. Great. I, original idea, Ryan. No, we started a company when the market was not hot. Uh, and everyone said, are you okay? Are you sure you're feeling well? Do you have COVID? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and so we won and we won that way. It was great. It was the best timing. It was awesome. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting way to look at it actually, when everyone else stops doing stuff to take a leadership position in the market, that's awesome strategy. So Sirhan is much more though than a real estate agency or brokerage. Can you tell me about some of the aspects of the brand that you've built? We are a content to commerce real estate firm. The, probably the first in the world. We have an in-house production company that creates content top of funnel. Content brings in two customers, salespeople and people who need salespeople. In our first year, we probably put out 400 pieces of video content, all real estate focused. Next year, we'll double that and so on. The salespeople then get funneled into either working with us at the brokerage or into the course. And the course trains them. We're now at about 10,000 real estate agents and 109 countries, Australia being one of the big ones for us. Um, and we then use those agents to teach them how to sell, but also to build a referral partnership. You know, I have 10,000 agents now all over the world who have learned from me in some way, shape or form that I know that if I, you know, get a lead for Australia or for South Korea or wherever, I have an agent there who I feel comfortable now referring to. And you know the TV show airs in 160 countries. So um, we get referrals all day long, or leads actually, all day long for places that I don't sell in. And so I have to refer that business out and I refer it to my course members. And so then the, the other customer that comes through all that content is the person who uh, needs salespeople. And those are the buyers and the sellers and the developers. So we lead generate, right? Any brokerage firm, you want them to generate leads for you. So how do we generate leads? That's how we do it. And those are our verticals. We then also have some subsets. So we do have, you know, we have technology. That's a lot of fun. I spend a lot of my days thinking about focusing on and paying for the technology. And then uh, we have an in-house creative agency called ID Lab. And that's basically our, our in-house uh, team who creates all of the marketing, all of the branding, all the graphics so that we can control it and do it in-house. And it works well. I've noticed you've got a virtual reality headset behind you. Are you doing a lot of that at the moment? Uh, yeah, we are. 
Um, and we have been for a while. It's only now trendy. Um, and so uh, between virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, uh, the metaverse, right? We're doing deals in cryptocurrency now. I just want to sell more real estate. If, that, if, if I'm going to sell the most real estate in the metaverse, then sign me up. Give me a one-way ticket. Let's go. I don't care. I, I don't want to have to walk. Like, why would I have to want to like walk somewhere or get in a car and like sit in traffic to go sell a piece of real estate? If I can sell it from my phone, perfect. You know, like I don't want to have to try. <laughs> it's, it's it's great. The virtual everything is awesome. I think the studios thing is super interesting. Um, yeah. Is towards towards the end of the season, there was a development I think you'd been interested in since it was like dirt. Um, yeah. And the gu the guy says at the end he's decided to rent everything, and it was just it was that it was a moment in the show that you know. Then he said, "I don't want you to manage it, but I do want you to market it." And yeah. I think this is pretty interesting um, because I've heard a number of agencies here say they've pivoted to being marketing agencies. They just happen to sell real estate. Is that something that you're doing more of as well, like working with other brokers yeah. to help them with their marketing? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I... It's not, I, don't, I do not want to be in the marketing agency business though. That's not fun. That's not fun to me. That's not what gets me going. I don't get excited about waking up to do that. Um, uh, but we do do it for our clients and for our agents and for our projects. And if it means being a part of a project versus not being a part of a project, then sure, then we can do it. And so as, as I just mentioned, you've launched a course called How to Build Your Personal Brand, which I'm sure is something, personal branding is something very near and dear to your heart. Can you explain a little bit of the behind the scenes of, of how and why you developed this course? It's probably the number one question I've been asked for 10 years. Not how do I sell or how do I become a real estate agent? It's how do I build my own brand, Ryan? Like, Ryan, you have a brand. People know your name and you, TV probably helped, but how do I build my brand? I, I'm nobody. I'm just, I'm just a regular guy with a kid and I, I try to sell real estate. I don't, I don't have a brand. Why would anyone want to know who I am? Or I'm a brand new agent. I've never sold anything. How could I build a brand so that people come to me and I don't have to go to them? Any person in any walk of life has asked me over the last 10 years, how do I build a brand? And so I finally put it into a course and it's 50 or 55 videos, it's workbooks, it's worksheets, it's everything. I mean, it's a real like five or six hours of watching, but I'm telling you, I spent 12 years and millions of dollars of my own money figuring out how to build my own brand. And I put it all into these five to six hours for like a couple hundred bucks. I, and it's everything I know about how to build a brand how to develop a core identity, how to create the content to promote that identity, and then how to amplify your successes so that people will reach out to you when you're sleeping. That's what you want. When you walk down the street, you want people to say, hey, yeah, you're, that, you're that guy that does real estate, right? Or, hey, you're, you're, the, you're that woman, you, you, you sell real estate, right? That's what you want. And I can help everyone get there. And so I just put it into the course because there's only so many individual people I can talk to every day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, secret, I bought the course um, and it's awesome. Oh, and I'm, thanks. <laughs> and I'm about halfway through it and I'm not a real estate agent, but I still think it's awesome. And um, so the three pillars, like let's just give everyone a taste. We're going to leave some links in the show notes and stuff to the course, but um, core identity, consistent content, and then shout it from the mountaintop. So can you explain quickly how those three go together? I have something that I developed a while ago for my own agents called the Sirhan Brand Strategy System. Because any agent, any salesperson, anyone, any person okay, out there in the world, anyone who's listening to this, you have a brand and you don't even know it. You might think you have a brand and you might think your brand is, well, I sell a lot of you know single family homes down by the lake. Okay. But your brand is a lot more than just that. It's a lot more than just what you sell. Okay, your brand has a lot to do with who you are as a person. And most of us are so ignorant to who we are as humans that we go our whole life thinking we're somebody that we're not. So the brand strategy system is three parts. The course is broken down into three sections. Okay? First section is figuring out who are you to your core? What's your core identity? One of the exercises we talk about is getting somebody else to tell you 
how they would define you without using your name. Because you might not know. You might think that you are defined by your hair color, your weight, and your kids. You know, and it turns out that that person is going to define you by three totally different things. You say, "Oh, wait, you you don't care about the fact that I'm super skinny or overweight or that I have red hair or this that." And you're like, "Oh, oh, I mean, I guess that's what you look like." But no, you're the person who X, Y, and Z. You need to really understand how you come off to other people, for better and for worse, because if you're the agent who talks too loud or who shakes hands weird, or who walks funny, or who, who, who doesn't know their shit, or who is a liar, right? Or whatever it might be, you got, you're going to want to fix that, or you don't fix it, but then you just don't get the right to complain, okay? So that core identity is really important. And also another part of that is figuring out what your and is. So A-N-D, what is your and? I am a salesperson and what? Okay. My and that I've now realized over the years is I am real estate and media. I like media. I like creating content. I like making little movies. I've always liked doing it since I was eight years old and I got my first camcorder. Like I like being in front of the camera. I like all that stuff. I like figuring out ads for social. Like that's my thing. So I'm going to own it. What's your and, and how is that a part of your core identity? Are you real estate and cats. Maybe you have all the cats. That's your thing. Use that. That's unique. Maybe you're, re maybe you're real estate and family because you have four kids. Maybe you're real estate and golf. Maybe you're real estate and cancer. Maybe you've lost somebody to cancer. Fuck cancer. You're going to make that your annual mission every year to raise money, every, a portion of every deal. 5% of each commission check you get is going to go to fighting cancer because cancer has affected your lives. People are going to rally behind you. People are going to email you about selling houses with you while you're sleeping because they're going to want to help donate to a good cause while also getting their home sold or finding a place to buy. I'm telling you, whatever you might not be thinking about, that is probably your end. Then it's about phase two, creating consistent content. Now, most agents make the mistake of creating a good piece of content, three bad pieces of content, putting them out there. No one watches them and they say, oh, it's not going to work. This is not for me. You must stay consistent. Think about it like a diet or like a fitness routine. You go to the gym four times, you don't have a six pack. No shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> it takes a lot of time and a lot of work. Okay. But guess what? The proof is in the pudding. Look at all the people who is worked for. And what do they have that you don't? They've been doing it for longer. So don't start tomorrow, okay? Make today your tomorrow. Why not just start? I made a vlog a long time ago. It's one of my favorite vlogs on YouTube. It's called Just Start. And it just like, it drives me crazy that so many people wait till Monday. Oh, no, on Monday, I'm going to be good. On Monday, you know what, Ryan? I'm going to start making content on Monday. Or, or now, what time, you know, it's the end of December, right? It's like, oh, well, it's the end of the I'm, I, January 1st, New Year's resolution. As if <laughs> it's those time. things mean anything to anybody. Time and dates are a construct that we created to give ourselves as human beings who are creatures of habit structure to hang on to so that we wouldn't lose our bloody minds. So when you really realize that, Make your today your tomorrow. Why wait? So start creating consistent content. And the, that part of the course really goes into it. How do you create consistent content over and over and over? Okay. Um, uh, uh, and we go into all of it. Every single platform, we talk about how to shoot it, how to create it, how to do it on a shoestring budget, how to do it for yourself, et cetera. Third part, we call shout it from the mountaintop which is also known as how to amplify your success. And so we have uh, my, my head brand strategist, Tyler Mount. He does most of phase two of the course because he's the best at that. And then Alyssa Garnick, who's one of the biggest publicists in the United States, she does phase three of the course. So we're all super, anyone who takes the course, super lucky. Like she's the publicist for like, you know, Coca-Cola and like Krispy Kreme and like huge brands. And so now she's telling you how to build your brand through the power of PR. Uh, and it's, there's a lot that goes into it. 
So that's it. Those are the three phases. It used to be that big agencies or brokerages were the brand, and that seems to have shifted a bit over the last few years. Can you give us your view on on that and how it works at Sirhan? At Sirhan, we are agent brand first. So you know, I'm lucky in that my brand is large enough, right? It's out there. Um, I don't have to focus on building my brand that much. You know, we do, but if people people know who I am. I get to now take all my resources and focus on the agent brands. How do I get my agents to be out there more than me? How do I really focus on them? And we help do that. We do social audits for them. We create property tours for them. We help manage their calendars for them. Uh, we help recreate logos for them. We do a lot for them. So the goal is actually to build their brands to be as big as yours. Yeah, if they can, sure. I want them to build the biggest brands ever. I want, I want to be afraid of everybody who works for me. I want them to be so good and be making so much money, I'm going to be afraid they're going to leave every day. If I don't feel that way, then I've hired a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> and I don't need monkeys opening doors. I want power brokers opening doors. I want them to be surrounded by greatness. And I want to lead by example. And no matter what, I will outwork everybody. And they know that. The course covers, as you just said, every single social media platform out there. Do you have a favorite? Yeah. I mean, I check Instagram the most. I think I've, I've kind of like matured in this business on Instagram. It came out in 2012 or so, right? So like that's right when I started really embracing brand um, and it's been nine years. And so, um, you know, it's been, I think Instagram is the most visual medium for us. Second after that is then YouTube probably my second most important. After that is then probably TikTok. After that is probably Facebook. And then after that are the rest, Twitter, Snapchat. You're a master at working with the media as well. As you said, your and is real estate and media. Do you have any tips for agents out there who might be wanting to get into working with the media? Well, sure. I mean, there's two ways to do it. One, you do it on your own. The second, you get out there with press and get on news shows, right? To get into the news, through print or, or on TV or digital, you have to create trend pieces. Like, it's amazing to me. People think that I'm in the news all the time because reporters come to me. If I looked at all the press I actually have outside of TV stuff, uh, I don't know, 30% of it are people coming to me probably. The rest are me. The same way real estate agents create deals, you know, you know an off-market house. Okay, I know a buyer. Oh, you put a deal together? If you want to be known, if you want to brand, you have to create things for people to talk about. What trends are you seeing? What deals are you doing? What is happening in the world? Every reporter is just an independent contractor, just like you. They need shit to write about. They need stuff to talk about, right? And that's so like, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. They need stuff to talk about. You don't, you, like, we, we just think these reporters are sitting around with like a thousand amazing golden stories and that they're just going to come to us like angels in the night. No. Go to a reporter and say, hey, I don't know what you're working on right now, but here's what's happening over on this block. You should write about it. I'm, I'm here to help you. Also, this other agent, he probably has a good point on it too because he sold two houses over there to those types of people that are moving in the area. Talk to him. That reporter will love you for the rest of their life, right? Help reporters out and they will come to you on their next story. They say, hey, you were such a huge help with that one thing. I'm writing a trend piece now about X. Do you want to comment? Sure because I want people seeing my name everywhere. People don't believe advertising, they believe PR. The power of the editorial goes a long way. The flip side of that kind of media content, okay, is you create it on your own because you have a full-on film studio in your phone. Create content, do it on your phone, make it raw, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, put it on TikTok and be consistent. Do it three times a week to start, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday or Sunday. Don't post anything on Fridays, no one cares. <laughs> right. And figure out a cadence and then just stick to it. You've got to stick to consistent content for a year before you're really going to notice a difference. And if you don't have the endurance to do that, then don't complain about it. People ask me all the time, the types of agents that I hire, like who I hire, what I look for. One of the first things I look for is endurance. If I meet you, I'm not going to follow back up with you. You better follow up with me. And I'm not going to respond right away. I got to make sure that you know how to follow up. I got to make sure that you also have endurance. If you're going to stick with me, then you can stick with clients. And if you can't stick with me, you give up after the second try. Thank God I didn't have you come work for me. Oh my God. Can you imagine if I gave you a buyer or seller and you gave up on them after the second try, I would kill you. 
I would literally, I would, I would, I would murder your whole family. Um, <laughs> it is like it was. It's a carnal rule. Um, so that's what I. That's what I look for. It's funny. I was just about to ask you that, and I'd like to spend the last bit of our time together talking a little about leadership because since uh, launching Sir Hant, your team's gotten quite a bit bigger. How many people now? Uh, we started with three. We're like at 130 now. Yeah, I, I, I read somewhere 60 or 70, but I thought it's got to be more than that by now. You just mentioned endurance, but recruitment. Uh, you must yeah. have people throwing themselves at you literally to come and work for you. Um, how do you approach recruitment? So recruitment for me is interesting. So what we've done this year is... I made a commitment to everyone that works with me that I would go after agents who um, have been in the business for at least five years, okay? Um, and they've got an annual gross commission income, okay, gross of at least $500,000. And I'm going to build a brokerage of excellence. I don't want any agents here who are sitting next to someone who doesn't know what they're doing. I don't want any agents here surrounded by people they don't like, right? I wanna build something exclusive and something great. Uh, to start. Okay. Cause they're going to really help me figure out what we're going to become. And then that's how you hold on to retention. I can have a thousand people here. 800 of them are going to leave. And I got 200 people who are going to be super difficult. So that doesn't sound like a good life, right? I'd rather have 300 people and then have 290 of them be awesome. <laughs> like I, I, it's about quality, not quantity. Um, always, always, always. So we reach out to, so agents come to us all the time and we vet them, but we also, I have a team that sits there and all day long, they think about agents that would be good for us, good for our brand, good for markets we want to be in. And we reach out and we say, Hey, this is Ryan Serhan. Um, would love to meet. You want to meet? You want to talk? And if they're weird or difficult, you don't want to meet, no problem. On to the next one. Last thing I need to do is bring somebody on who's difficult from the first conversation. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and listen, I don't, I don't win agents with splits or commissions. I definitely don't pay the highest splits. I definitely don't give the biggest concessions whatsoever. There's firms out there I compete with who like throw money at agents to come over. I could care less if you are incentivized by money and we all are, but if money's first, then I'm probably not your right person. Okay. My incentive every single day is to win. And I want everyone who's here to be incentivized to win as well. I, I, I could care less if I made money right now. I just know by default that my obsession with winning and beating everybody is going to make me money. And so therefore we will survive and we will be great. It's been wonderful watching you mentor Talia on Million Dollar Listing, but it's still yeah. your name on the door. Yes. So a common problem that agents come to me with is, how do you manage seller expectations when they want to deal with you? Like, are we going to see Ryan rather than a new member of your team? It depends on where the lead comes from. If the lead goes to the agent directly, there's no issue. If the lead comes to me, I have to think about with each case, what they are. And typically we break it down by price point. So in New York, you know, if you're under $5 million, I can, I can give you out to an agent and that client will be totally fine with it. Over 5 million, I have to make a decision. And oftentimes I'll go to the first pitch, but I'll bring that team member with me and I'll explain how we work. This is, this is, this is a team. Like you're hiring a company. You're not just hiring me. Also, you don't just want me. I'm crazy. Okay, you want good people to work with us too, right? You want, you know, Talia, she's amazing. Talia is going to be here 24 hours a day to get this thing sold. I'm not going to be here 24 hours a day. Um, like that's what you want. And everyone seems to understand that. And, you know, then my work is figuring out the personalities. Like, is Talia right for this seller? Is Talia right for that buyer? And kind of piecing together um, those relationships so that those working relationships are really healthy. Because we've all had, in people in my position anyway, like, you know, the client that comes to me is like, hey, Ryan, listen, you are awesome, but the agent you set me up with just totally sucks. My wife hates them. So we're going in a different direction. Sorry, man. I get it. You're busy. Ugh. So you've got to be careful about those personalities. And then I make sure that I am, I, I'm, I'm visually anyway, I am uh, still in touch with everything. They copy me on emails. I'm in touch on a lot of stuff. Um, I'm there to negotiate. I'm there to help as much as possible. But where they need me, they'll need me. Where they don't need me, they definitely don't need me. They don't use me. 
Part of the philosophy behind your brand is a global approach, which is one of the reasons that we're talking today, but we haven't seen too many big name brokerages in the US venture beyond the US. What yeah. is your ultimate ambition for Sir Hant? Absolute and utter world domination. Why not? Why settle for anything small? Like, I just don't get it. It's the same thing with the people that are like, no, I'm going to do it on Monday. It's like, why, why not? Now I get it. There's legalities and it's really hard, but if it was easy, everybody would do it. And I want to be everywhere. I mean, like, why would I, why would I not at least try? I'm not going to do anything stupid, right? I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to be like purple bricks in London and like spend $50 million in the United States to open up in the United States and totally bomb and blow it and then pull out and go bankrupt. Like that's stupid. I wouldn't spend that kind of money. I don't need to be number one tomorrow. Like I'm only, I'm 37. I've got at least 200 years left to live. Like I'm going to take the time I need to, to do it right. Is it true? You just said you're 37 now. Is it true that you have a photo of yourself in the office that has been aged to show you much older? Yep. And it's in the back of my first book. So like Sir Hant, and it's me at 80 years old and it's future Ryan. And that guy is who I work for. I work for that guy because before like I'm 37, I'm not that old. But man, oh man, am I old compared to like 10 years ago. Hey, so I was 24, right? I was 24 years old when I, when I started in this business. And now I'm 37. So I've been doing it for 13 years. Um, when I was 24, if you'd asked me where I'd be when I was 37, I would not have said here. I don't even know what I would have said. I probably would have said when I first started, I'm definitely not doing real estate. <laughs> um, uh, and yet here I am. And so I think that... Uh, that guy that I work for in the future is important in keeping me in check because he reminds me every day that I see that damn photo. One, I look great as an 80 year old dude. I'm going to rock it as a grandpa, but two, uh, uh, his life better be awesome. Otherwise I don't want to get there. As we're recording this, we're heading into the holiday season after an interesting couple of years. Do you make new year's resolutions? No. I make new, I make, uh, so I, I don't do New Year's resolutions because um, there's nothing I want to change. We, I, I'm big on goals though. I set, I set quarterly goals um, and annual goals. And so I do that for myself and we do that for the entire company. And so we use a system called OKRs. And so we really set OKRs and we go through there. And so my New Year's resolutions are to build and do bigger and do more, you know, every year. And so far, so far, so good, except for 2020. 2020, we sold less um, uh, because New York City was on fire. But I wrote my second book and I started my own company and it totally dominated. It was awesome. So I actually did more in terms of moving my life forward in 2020, even though I sold less. Let's say I'm getting on a plane, uh, which would be really weird right now, but I'm getting on a plane to go on a holiday finally. Uh, and I'm yep. at the airport. And there are two books in front of me. One is Sell It Like Sir Hand, and the other is Big Money Energy. Which one should I read first and why? So I, I, I wrote the books, you know, thinking that, and I'm writing my third book now, thinking that people would read them in order. And it's funny. A lot of people read them the other way. They read Big Money Energy first, uh, and then they go into Sell It Like Sir Hand. Sell It Like Sir Hand is tactical. It's like all the ingredients for the meal. Big money energy is the secret sauce and how to serve it because you can make the best meal ever, but if it sits in a cupboard or in the refrigerator, what's the point? So big money energy figures out how do you actually make that meal taste good? And how do you serve it to the best people, right? How do you have confidence in a situation where you have no confidence? How should you think about life moving forward? How do you make a great first impression? Um, it's everything that I, I know about creating uh, the person that I am today. Sell like Sirhan is how to sell and how to build a sales career. So you can make as much money as you want. Um, and they're very important for salespeople to read for very different reasons. And I think they work really, really well together. So during the pandemic, some people have had a great ride and some people not so much. I watched the keynote that you did for a cruise ship company. And in the keynote, you share a story of a woman by the name of Alice. And I thought it was pretty inspirational. Yeah, thank you. I do a lot of speeches and I do them all the time. And so we, we try to record as many of them as we can. It's a great story of persistence, I think. Like, you know, when you want to give up, don't give up. 
always, 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 always follow up, follow through, follow back. You will eventually win or force them to allow you to win because you just won't go away. So it's still a yes or a maybe unless it's a flat no. No, it's always yes or maybe. It's that classic line of like, <laughs> someone says no a thousand times. And you're just like, so you're saying there's a chance, right? Yeah. So you're saying there's a chance. Always, 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 always. There's a, um, you know, Lehman Brothers, the investment bank that went under and crashed the financial markets in the United States anyway. And then it reverberated around the world in 2008. There's a, there's a play on Broadway called the Lehman Trilogy, all about how the Lehman Brothers came to America right? They're, you know, Jews, they came over, they didn't know English, they, you know, had to change their names and all that stuff. Um, and they built up this massive bank just by figuring things out step by step. Like they weren't born into it. They had zero dollars. The first thing they ever did was they sold like seed and fertilizer and like weird stuff. And then they sold, then they, they kept changing their business. Every time they figured out something new to sell, they kept changing it. And eventually they got into stocks and bonds and security. Anyway, uh, the thing that stuck out with me the most is they were the most persistent people because they had the immigrant drive, that immigrant blood. They cannot wake up without proving themselves. And one of the brothers went once a month to this girl's house who he was in love with. Every month, she told him that she wasn't interested. And then like a year later, one month, the door was just open and he went in and there she was. And she was finally ready and married the girl of his dreams. Now, you don't want to be a creep. You don't want to harass anyone. If everyone says, hey, please stop coming over, like, <laughs> that means something. But she never actually said that. She, you know, um, and it's just like, listen, anything is possible if you just try. Not enough people try. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for sharing your time and some of your knowledge with us. It's been great to meet you. And we're going to leave a heap of links in the show notes for um, for the personal branding course and sell it like Sir Hand and all that sort of thing. But I always ask my guests on this show if there's one final thought or piece of advice for agents heading into the new year, what would it be? Take my course. You will make more money. I guarantee it. If you don't, like email me, I'll give you your money back. I don't care. I'm not in this to make money. I built it initially because for I, I felt very alone in this business when I started. Um, and I don't want other agents to feel that way. So. Ryan Sohan, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome.